Alright, so what I'm going to be teaching today is how to do a sodium silicate texture on the outside. And sodium silicate, I just get it from Aardvark. It's a clear liquid, almost gelatinous. Uh, I get it, like I said, from Aardvark. It's actually a floor sealer, a tile sealer. Most people use it for sealing grout. This one's a little thick because it's been in there quite a while. Uh, I'm going to use two different brushes and I'm going to use something for contrast. So first thing I'm going to do, and you guys have seen me throw a thousand cylinders, so I skipped that part just to get to the technique because it takes a while, it's a lot of drying. So I'm going to make some lines. I'm going to make one down here and one up here. I want to leave myself enough space at the top to either make a lip or to eventually uh, cone it in so that way I can make an inset lid or something like that. But I don't want to go too low because then I can't trim the bottom and I don't want to go too high because then I can't form the lip at all. Uh, essentially, you could go a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but just for the sake of example, I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to use a color for contrast. So the first thing I'm going to do, and when I threw this cylinder too, let me take a step back. When I threw the cylinder, I make sure that I do my last pull with a rib on the outside, so I can get all the slip off and let it dry a little bit. also makes it so that my uh, color of contrast, in this case black iron oxide, uh, doesn't run as much and it gets a little thicker so I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up just a personal preference okay, until that starts to dilute on the clay starts to thin out and you can do this with any number of things I've done this with cobalt uh, red iron oxide um, inclusion stains under glazes the possibilities are endless. You can use anything that would change the color of the, the clay. That makes for a nice contrast. This also goes really well if you don't use any colors at all. Maybe you could use the colors, but if you do it with like an Avara firing or some of the Raku firing, some of the fast fire stuff. Don Ellis has a book, the man who I learned this technique from, uh, called Alternative Firings that I use a ton and my students love it. They love doing all the alternative firings. And so I make some of these for the, that type of technique. Now normally I would rinse this brush and then I'd use it for the sodium silicate as well. But in this case, I'm not gonna run over to the sink while I'm making a video, so I'm just gonna set that aside, close my black iron oxide. Um, and then the reason why is because I don't wanna get the black iron oxide into my sodium silicate. I want my sodium silicate to stay nice and clean, nice and clear. So now I'm gonna apply the sodium silicate. both sides of the brush because I eventually do a little brush flip and again I start from the bottom and work my way up Oops, got some on my wheel there start from the bottom and work my way up and then I flip the brush and so naturally I'll get a little bit of iron oxide on there so I'm just gonna rinse that out in my bucket sodium silicate. It's pretty thick because I think my students have left the lid open or I did. Take some blame for that. Should be a little thinner than this but that's okay. And the thicker you do this coating uh, the bigger the chunks of uh, texture are. The thinner you do it the smaller they are. I like to do kind of a medium chunk so I put on a little medium coat there. And You'll see a sheen on there when you get your sodium silicate on. Be careful you don't get the sodium silicate on your wheel head. In my case, I'm using, almost forgot to rinse it. I'm using bats, um, so I don't want to get them on my bats because that will seal and it'll stain. Um, it also won't allow you to trim down below, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So right here, right there you'll see a run part of that sodium silicate part of its black iron oxide I need to make sure I clean that off right now while it's still wet and also get this off of here too so I'm gonna clean that off later I'll rinse my sponge it's not as messy as it seems and it's not that big of a deal either um, sometimes I just take a putty knife and get it off the wheel heads we use metal wheel heads and they, my students throw right on the wheel head
Maybe the main reason you want to get that off is not just so it's not on your wheel, but also because um, you're about to dry it, and if you dry it down here, that's going to be a spot that's completely untrimmable. So let me get some more of that sodium silicate off where I spilled it. So yeah, if you spill the sodium silicate anywhere, just wipe it off with a sponge and rinse the sponge. So now I'm going to use the heat gun to dry this sodium silicate. You can over dry it. If you dry it too long, it's really hard to stretch out. I'm going to eventually stretch this structure, um, but it's really hard to uh, stretch and all of a sudden it gives and it tends to puncture holes in it. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to use the heat gun for a while. And I have a tendency to start at the bottom and work my way up very slowly. And the reason for that is in case I see any leaks as I go up, I can get those off so it doesn't leak down below my little line that I've made. And also it starts to dry the bottom so it's less likely to run. But I've done it both ways, it works. But I've had it where it started at the top, started working my way down and then ended up with a run. I just like to get that bottom layer a little dried. So this is probably what takes the most time on this piece, is just drying the sodium silicate. I'll do it for about two or three minutes. And then I'll edit any of my videos. I do them long haul, except for throwing the structure in this case. Just so my students can see, and it's not like an easy bake oven style, like Food Network. No offense to Food Network. Probably my most watched channel besides travel. But you can start to see the sodium silicate. It starts to lose its sheen, so it's not quite as, as glossy. And that's when you know it's starting to dry. So I can see some spots where the sodium silicate was a little thicker. And the sodium silicate, it's a great technique, especially because it's inexpensive. The sodium silicate, you can get a, I think it's a five gallon, no, it's a two gallon, or two and a half gallon tub. Um, probably about eight, nine bucks from Aardvark, play and supply. Not sure how much it is elsewhere. I know if you buy it from Home Depot or as a tile sealer itself, um, I'm not sure which one's more refined and which isn't, but um, it's a lot more expensive from Home Depot. Yeah, just plain old sodium silicate. And again, you don't need the color. I'm just doing it for contrast so that you can see it. And um, I've done these with cobalt carbonate and uh, then put a white over the whole thing and the uh, little textures that you'll see after we do the crackling uh, came out blue and then the inside was all white and it was kind of nice. Uh, I've done, like I said, with a vara, done it with uh, where I've actually put a full-blown glaze on here. Um, I did once with a cone tan glaze and then once with the uh, raku glaze. I used a Christmas foil type raku glaze. And I put it on here, and then put the sodium silicate over, crackled it, and then everything was black on the piece, just from smoke or carb, uh, carbon. And uh, then fired the piece in Raku, and only those little spaces that I colored. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Once we get this a little bit more dry, we're really, really close. But yeah, the whole piece was black, and then except for the little crackles where the sodium silicate was, those were Raku colors, so foil color. One more little sheen line here that I'm trying to get rid of. So we're very close to stretching. Once I start stretching, uh, you'll see the crackles. This one's not going to be a very heavy crackle like I like to do, or a medium crackle, because I'm not drying it very long for the sake of the video. I may look out and just get a little bit more crackling than I'm thinking, but usually it's pretty small with that short of uh, drying period. And the heat gun, no, you don't need to use it, but it just helps speed up the process. You could let it dry for a while as long as you don't see any runs on there. So I'm just looking for my rib. 
So I'm going to start with the, uh, I use the mud tools. I just really like the flexibility of it from Mike Sherrill, also at Aardvark. No promotions here. So I'm going to start at the top right there and just push a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to stop just to make sure that I'm, see, I'm starting to get a very tiny crackle. It is going to be a pretty small crackle, but I just want to make sure with that first little tug or push um, or stretch, if you will, uh, is I just want to make sure that it's crackling. If it's not crackling, then I need to put on more sodium silicate and dry it a bit more. And again, I would have loved to have dried this a little bit more and maybe added one more layer of sodium silicate or at least just a more hardy layer the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this now. So I'm just inside. I use my right hand just because of the way the wheel spins. I used to use my left on the side, but I had a hard time with that. Um, with my right, I just go inside, stretch. I start at the top, work my way down, then work my way back up. And I always make sure the bottom of my plot is nice and flat. Um, it'll kind of concave up into the curve that I'm about to make. So then I start working my way back up now that I made it to the bottom. And those little bounces are just from my opening not being wide enough for my hand to fit in there. If you wanted to, I don't mind them because I know they don't cause any issues, but you could open the top a little bit more. More of a fear thing. A lot of my students will feel that bounce and they start to bail out and they get afraid. So again, I'm just working my way top to bottom, bottom to top. The more you stretch it, the more texture you end up getting out of it. And if you stretch it while it's going fast, you'll get a spiral out of your crackle. And if you stretch it very slowly, your crackles will just be kind of vertical. So just depending on the aesthetic you're going for. So right now I went top to bottom, top to bottom, back to back, just because I'm looking for a particular shape. I want it to be nice and smooth and contoured. I don't want it to be uh, jutting out in any particular spots. If you get a little wobble on these, don't worry about it. Just keep trying the technique. If you're a more advanced potter, you're obviously less likely to get that, but you're gonna get them Especially if you haven't done a whole lot of bulbs this shape. Okay, now I'm starting to hit the lip a little bit just on my way up. So I'm going to go in and just straighten that out. I'll stop for a second just so you can see the crackle now. So you can see the contrast between the black iron oxide and the natural clay behind it. And that's just the sodium silicate seals that clay in. And then as you stretch it, it has to crack and those pieces stay together and the natural clay shines through. So now it's just time for shaping. You could potentially pull this lip out. Got quite the wonky little wobble there. Um, I'm going to take this one in a little bit because I want to make a lid for this later on. I'm just going to wet that portion of the clay. These have a tendency to collapse right here. So if you ever have one collapse, uh, test it out. I mean, you've already kind of gone overboard. Heat gun it for a while and keep going with it. Just practice and see what you can get away with. Do this in small increments here. You can already tell I'm going to end up having to trim the lip because I got a little wobble to it, and that's okay. And I don't want to add too much water because that'll lend to this collapsing here, which this one's really small. I think I started with just over three pounds. 
so I don't think I'll have a worry with it. You never know though. One more time. Make it okay, so I'm where I need to be, but my lip is a little wonky, so get my needle tool. When I do this, I cut here and have my finger in, um, in front of it so that when it finally cuts through, I can catch that little piece. Just like that. Okay, I'm checking my final shape here before I move on to sealing the lip. Could have pushed this out quite a bit further. But I'm gonna trim a pretty small foot on this in the end. So I'm gonna clean that lip up. Yeah, but this one, just thinking about it while I'm doing it, and I may change my mind later after I bisque fire it, but I think I'm gonna do an Avaro over this and see how that black iron oxide looks in contrast to those toasty marshmallow colors. Again, I'm just taking this and I'm just trying to level this out, make sure it's a contoured shape all the way up. Also thinning that lip a little bit because it was a little, little hefty. Okay, so I would fine tune detail this whole thing. I'm gonna flatten this lip out a little bit more. Then I'll make an inset lid for it, which I'll do in another video, but I'll do an inset lid that fits right in here and kind of concaves over with some sort of handle, maybe something, a handle with a black iron oxide or something like that. But that is the sodium silicate crackle texture.